Turkish. <laughs> the only word I know is Gunaiden, and that's good morning. So it's a bit late for that. So she was beautiful. She had beautiful eyes. She walked like a gazelle. And when he looked at her, she dropped her eyes demurely. And when he had the occasion to speak to her, her voice, it was so lovely. And he was delighted when his family and her family spoke to each other and agreed that he would have her as his bride. And they lived very happily together. They had three children and he ran a spice shop. But over the years, she started to put on weight like women do when they have children and they like the Turkish delight and the baklava and the other nice sugary honey foods. And like many women, she started to complain a little bit and she started to talk a little bit too much. And so that wandering eye of his started to wander just a little bit more. He couldn't help it after all, he was a man, these things happen. And one day into the shop came a very beautiful woman. And she too had beautiful eyes and a very beautiful voice and he was quite enchanted by her. And she bought what she came to buy and she left the shop and he couldn't help thinking about her and fantasizing about her. And then he noticed that she'd left a small bag on the counter. And so he opened it in case there were some valuables in it. And it was just 12 grains of black rice. But it was hers and he hoped she'd come back for it because of course he wanted to see her again. And the day went by and in a state of excitement and anticipation because she was sure to come back, he waited, but she didn't come back. And that evening he felt quite down about it but maybe she'd come the next day. So he waited and the next day came and went and no sign of her. And his wife started to be troubled. And she said to husband, you look so sad these days. You look so preoccupied. You seem very down. Your mood is not a good mood. What is wrong? And after so many years of marriage, he felt comfortable confiding in his wife. And so he told his wife about this lovely lady that had come into the shop and about the bag that she'd left behind. And his wife opened the bag and looked in it and said, oh, well, I can tell you where she lives. You can take it back to her if you like. And he said, well, how do you know where she lives? And he said, she said, well, there's 12 grains, black grains of rice. So she comes from the grain market, lives at number 12, black door to the house. So he hurried off to the grain market and indeed there was a black door at number 12. And he knocked on the door and she opened the door. His wife was right. My goodness, his wife had been right. And she threw a bucket of water out onto the, uh, onto the <coughs> step in front of him. His sandals were wet, his feet were wet, the bottom of his gown was wet and she shut the door. He stood there for quite some time and he knocked at the door again and there was no answer. And so he trudged home through the market past the sellers of spices and teas and Raki, had a glass of Raki on the way. Arrived home looking as dejected as he was feeling, sandals wet, bottom of his gown wet. And his wife said, well, did you find a black door with number 12 on? He said, yes, I did. And she said, does she live there? And he said, yes, indeed she does. She threw a bucket of water out onto the street. Look, I'm so wet. And she said, oh, husband, do you not understand what that means? There's a stream at the back of the house. You should go by the back door. Oh, hurried back again, went round to the back of the house. And indeed there was a stream. He knocked on the back door. And she opened the window and she showed him a mirror. And then she showed him the reverse of the mirror. And then she shut the window. Well, he was quite mystified by this. He really had no idea why she'd shown him this mirror. And so he walked home and on arrival home, his wife, of course, greeted him and said, so what happened? And he said, well, you're right, wife. There was a stream at the back of the house and I, I knocked on the door and the door didn't open, but a window did higher up. And she came to the window and she showed me a mirror. <laughs> 
And then she turned the mirror around. I mean, like, I don't understand. His wife said, husband, she is showing you that when the moon shows its reverse face, which is about 10 o'clock at night, she will be there to meet you. Do you not understand anything? And so at 10 o'clock at night, he left, or just before 10 o'clock at night, he left the house and hurried back to the back of this lady's house by the stream. And indeed she was there and they walked quite pleasantly together and chatted. Meanwhile, his wife hurried off to the police station and made her report and returned home because she wanted to teach this little husband of hers a lesson because she wasn't so happy with the roving eye. And it was pretty cheeky to be telling her about a woman he'd seen in the shop that he really rather liked. So she thought, hmm, let's see what I can do with you. And so the police went along. And of course, in those days, it was not acceptable for a married man to be meeting with an unmarried woman. And so they were both arrested and thrown in prison. And so he didn't come home that night and he didn't come home for the next few days. And his wife was busy baking. She baked lots of lovely little pastries and she put them all in a basket. She put her robes on and she went along to the prison and she sent to the prison warden, I have come to mark the anniversary of my deceased mother and I wish to give food to all of the prisoners. And she was allowed in. And so she went to every cell and handed out the food. And then she came to the cell of the lady who was quite shocked when she opened the door and saw this woman who she recognized as the man's wife. And the wife said to her, if you agree to never ever come in our shop again, to never speak to my husband again, to make no effort to contact my husband, I can spare you the embarrassment of being in jail, the embarrassment of facing a court trial, the embarrassment of probably being put back into prison, the shame of it all. If you promise that, I will swap places with you. And so the woman agreed and the veils came off and they switched places. And the woman left with the empty basket of, of pastries, looking very much like the lady that had entered. And the wife was in the cell in prison and eventually their case came to court and she was asked to remove her veil so that they could identify her. And the husband was really like, Ooh, it's my wife. And he was quite shocked that his wife was there in court, couldn't understand this at all. And for the first time in many years, he was grateful that his wife nagged, that she moaned, that she spoke too much because she sure as heck gave a really lengthy speech as to how she felt, a married woman, talking to her husband on a starry night, Valentine's night, and being arrested for it and put in prison. This was an outrage. It was unacceptable. And she asked for certain witnesses to come in and identify her as the legitimate wife of this man. And so the court was adjourned. The case was thrown out and there was no charges brought against them and they left the prison or the, the courthouse arm in arm. And the husband said to the wife, well, indeed, you are the best of wives and never again will I ever feel that I want to look at another woman or at least not for a while. <laughs> Thank you, Julian. Thank you. Thank you. Fantastic.